Hi, this is experiment number three, density of saline solutions. And uh, I've got, I'm gonna pick up on page three, page three, uh, instruction number one, equilibrate 400 milliliters of distilled water, tap water, reverse osmosis tap water, uh, all other options as well. To room temperature, record the temperature of the water. I'm gonna record the temperature of the water. Give it a good swirl. I'm getting 23.4 degrees Celsius, pretty constant. That's because I've let it sit here for uh, 10 or 15 minutes while I was setting up. So in my table, under temperature of the water for the five gram sample, since that's what I'm gonna be doing, it's gonna be 23.4 degrees Celsius. Um, then coming back to the procedure, it says record the mass of a clean, dry, 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. I've got my uh, scale here, and I will switch over so you can see my scale. I will turn it on, wait for the zero to appear, put on my scale. 20.67 grams. And now it says, uh, take the graduate cylinder off the scale at approximately five grams of sodium chloride. I've got my sodium chloride right here. Morton's kosher salt. It's uh, coarse, so it's going to take a little while for it to dissolve. And I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, in my 100 milliliter beaker, pour a little of the salt. Just to hold it, because I think it's going to be easier to get out of there. Set my salt aside. And then in my graduated cylinder. Let's see, so... It's 20.67 for the cylinder, so I want about 25.67 total. I'm gonna to put some salt in, and I'm gonna pour it out of here. And I don't know what five grams is, so I'm just gonna put a little bit in. I'm already at 24, and I want 25, so most of the way there. If you get a little extra than five or you get a little less than five, it's all good. Oh, getting closer. I want, let's see, 25.67. So we'll add a little more. Always take it off because you do not want to get salt on your scale. That is the worst thing for a scale. Salt and water cause rust. All right, we're a little bit over, but that's okay. Set my salt aside, and my mass of my graduated cylinder plus NaCl is 25.75 grams. And now the next instruction. is to um, add approximately 25 milliliters of distilled water to the graduate cylinder. The exact amount does not matter. Try not to spill though. And about 20. And about 25. And then it says, uh, mix well without spilling, no inversion. Swirl the graduate cylinder until the salt dissolves without spilling the solution. This will take a few minutes especially since we have the coarse salt. So one principle of chemistry and science in general is that the uh, bigger the pieces, the smaller the amount of surface area, and the longer it will take for something to dissolve in general. And uh, so if you want it to dissolve more quickly, if you want it to dissolve faster, use smaller pieces of salt smaller pieces of anything, really. 
Let's see, I still got some solids in there. With 25 in here, it's actually pretty tough to spill it while swirling like this. Not impossible though. Uh, I'm looking for swirlies in there. I can see some swirlies, some actual pieces moving around. And then the swirlies are density gradients because the sodium chloride solution will be more dense than pure water. It is as if the sodium and chloride ions are fitting between the water molecules and therefore taking up similar volumes but uh, making it with all that matted mass, taking, giving it more mass, more mass for essentially the same volume will be more density. Almost done. I don't know if you can see that. No solids left in the bottom. That's my key. Then add until it is very close to the 50 line. You can see my 50 line from my calibration before is just above the 50 line from uh, given. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to look straight across at it. And I'm at about 48. So I'm going to get my pipette. And I'm going to look straight across at it. Good technique says look straight across. And I'm going to make sure it doesn't spill. And it's right in the middle of my black line. So I'm going to say that's good. I'm going to put this down here so I don't spill it. Well, I move back and forth. All right. So add distilled water. Do not go over the line. Take a picture. Please do take a picture. I look forward to seeing your pictures. And then mix well without spilling with inversion. And to do that, uh, you do need a piece of plastic wrap or a piece of a plastic bag. I'm going to use a piece of plastic wrap. I'm going to tear off. There we go. Uh, and I could normally cut this with scissors, but I'm just going to use this big piece. So what do you want to do? You want to get it all the way over the top and even give it a little twist to make sure it's tight. And it's not really that tight. So you're going to put your hand over it and we're going to invert. And now everything in here, if you should lose a drop because of the plastic wrap, has the same concentration. So if you lose a drop now, you're okay. If you lost, lost a drop earlier, there would be a different concentration than because you only had 25 milliliters in it. And I do this at least 10 times. Let it fall back in. Again, now if it's a tiny bit below your line, that's because there is some solution on the side, but it's all the same concentration and it is still 50 milliliters. All right, I'm going to set that aside while well, I figure out what to do next. Uh, pour the solution into a clean, dry 100 milliliter beaker if you have it. Um, my 100 milliliter beaker has salt in it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my salt in my 250 milliliter beaker. Now my 100 milliliter beaker, it doesn't look like it has very much, but it has some salt in it, or it could. And whenever you have something in it, that could, uh, whenever, but that could change your concentration of your solution. So we condition it and pour a little bit. And I'm going to swirl it around. I'm going to coat the sides, get any salt that was in there out, and then put it into my waste. And you do that three times because that's what conditioning is. And you have plenty of solution in here. I wouldn't waste it though. And then another technique to get the top and just in case there's any salt there is get it over to the edge over your waste beaker 
and then pour it in. That's my second one. And if you're looking, I still have about a little less than 47 milliliters of that left. So I'm only taking a milliliter or so each time. I'm rolling around that solution in there. And then I roll it up to the sides. And dump it in. Now, whatever solution is in here is the solution for my graduated cylinder. Now I'm good to go. And then if there's any water in here, that's fine. I'll give it a final shake, but. So now I've conditioned my 100 milliliter beaker. Now next it says measure the density and percent composition of the solution. There is a video associated with this. You've also got this video that we're making now. Record the mass. Good. All right, so now I'm going to put my procedure over on the other side. Record the mass of the 50 milliliter beaker. Eleven point one eight. Now I'm going to add ten milliliters using my pre-calibrated pipette. Here's my marks on it, and for mine, it's this middle mark here that was my two milliliters, right? And my others were estimates that were wrong. So, and here's actually where your calibration from the previous lab really comes into play. Oop, what else I got? Oh. I did forget to pour this into my 100 milliliter. My 50 milliliter. Well, that was clean and dry anyway. All right. I think I messed up there, but I've now got my solution, my 50. I've got one, my 100, and I'm going to weigh things on my 100. If you do it the other way, that's fine. This 50 was clean and dry, so it is the same solution. Well, let's do it the right way. Let's put it in the 100. Mm. Since it's nice and conditioned. And my 50, again, it doesn't matter if it's clean and dry. So do, 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 into the 50 milliliter beaker. My 50 milliliter beaker is 6.10, single cross out. 6.10 grams, that's a zero. Good. Uh, now, now's where it's important. I'm going to now put 10 milliliters in here. And if your calibration works correctly, then you should get more than 10 grams because the salt is going to make the solution more dense. If you don't, that's okay. That means your calibration from last time was a little off. But as long as you hit the same mark, two milliliters, wherever it is, every single time, you will get data that works, right? Your densities may be a little off, but the key to this lab is hitting that mark with every single time you use it, hitting it exactly the same way. And if you do that, everything will work and you'll get a nice trend line. Anyway, well, uh, let's see. Your mileage may vary, but I'm going to do my best here to hit this mark. So, and we need 10 milliliters. This is two milliliters, so I'm going to do this five times. Hit the mark. One. Squeeze it all out. All right, get enough in there. Two. Let me get a little better view on it here. Three. Four. Don't go under the mark. Don't go over the mark. And five. Hit it. Good. Hope I did my calibration correctly. 
All right, so that's five times. Put it back on my scale. Then let it come to zero. Put in 10 milliliters, 17.06. And that's more than 10, so that's a good sign. It's closer to 11, in fact. All right, then do it again. Uh, yeah, and I'll show you all my data in a minute. But here, so don't empty it. So we're doing everything three times here. That's one, two. Three. Get out that Four. Saw me touch it to the inside last time. If there's a drop right at the end, you can touch it to the inside. That's fine. Five. Now let's go over to our scale. You can see my data there a little bit. Turn on the scale. Twenty-seven point nine five. Right across, Bill. One. Two. Three. Touch it to the inside if you want. As long as it makes it into that beaker, it's going to get weighed. Four. Thirty-eight point nine zero, and we can get each ten milliliters by taking the seventeen point zero six minus the six point one zero, the twenty-seven point nine five minus the one before it, etc. All right, so that's thirty milliliters of my solution. Let's go back and read our procedure. Oh, did I forget to condition my pipette? Well, uh, yes, so that's going to throw my results off a tiny bit. That's an error that I made because the, oh, the pipette was clean and dry. Right, I used another pipette for, uh, still, I needed to condition it because that, that can and probably did throw my results off a little bit. I delivered the 10 milliliters. Um, repeat the measurement, I did that. Dilute a, solu a solution to a known concentration. Condition the 50 milliliter graduated cylinder with distilled water. All right, my 50 milliliter graduated cylinder is right here. So I'm gonna condition it with my distilled water. Just a little bit. Conditioning with distilled water, so rinsing, rinsing the sides. And then rinsing it into my waste. Do that three times. 
This is particularly important because there's a lot. There was a lot of salt in the solution, and your dilute solution will be have a lot less. So, second time. That's three times now. The only thing in here is deionized water or tap water, reverse osmosis tap water for me. Add approximately 25 milliliters of distilled water. Exact amount doesn't matter. Now I get the question sometimes, why do we do this? Why do we put some water in? Um, and that's because, like before, when the salt actually dissolves, or this time when two solutions mix, the volume can change a little tiny bit. So we want that to happen first. We want to get the mixing to occur, and then we want to fill it up to 50. Because if we just filled it up to 50, and then we added salt, then the salt would change the volume clearly at some level. And then even after it's dissolved, it can change the volume a little tiny bit. So that's why we do this. We put some solution in. Looks like I got about 22. Now, deliver 10 milliliters using a pipette from our previous solution. And uh, I've got my solution here. I'm going to deliver 10 milliliters. We will be getting kind of low, but don't worry, you have enough. And uh, let's see. But at this point, we're getting good at this. Straight across. One. As long as I don't miss. I do not have depth perception, so. One. Two. All right, I'm going to grab the whole bulb now. Three. Still tap it against the side if you want. Be careful not to knock it over. Four. Get all of it. Make sure you're going every time to that line. Good. And yeah, you should be getting kind of low on solution, but you should not be out. All right, now that's 10 more milliliters. Yeah, so I was at 22 ish. I'm now at 32 ish. Deliver your 10 milliliters. Add distilled water to the 50 line. Mix well without spilling with inversion. So here's my deionized water. Here's my other one that has, so not my calibrated one, my other one, no marks on it. That's my deionized water one, or my tap water one in this case. And fill it up to my black line, my calibration for 50. There we go. I'm just gonna keep that in the tap in the tap water so I know it's there. Use my plastic. Well, my plastic has salt on it, so I'm gonna get a new piece of plastic. Should have brought scissors so I could cut better pieces of this, but Seven, eight, nine, ten. Should be good. Make it back in there. 
Again, plastic grocery bags will work for this. All right, now I've got my dilute solution. And my dilute solution, remember, took 10 milliliters of my solution from before. We'll talk about how to do calculations with that. And now, pour the solution into a clean, dry 100 milliliter beaker. Well, I do not have a clean, dry 100 milliliter beaker. So I will condition the one I was just using with a few drops of solution three times. Getting the entire side, oops, the entire inside of that wet. Always important not to mix up things. Mix up your beakers because that will have a profound effect on your results. That's my second time. Here comes my third time. And then can pour the whole rest of it in. It's now conditioned. You are not changing the concentration. It is exactly the same solution that you had in here before. This time, it will be very important for me to condition my calibrated pipette. Get everything out I can. Suck a little bit up. It's so important because I had a different solution in here last time. Coat the entire insides with the solution three times. And now my solutions match. And now I'm just going to put it in this so I know that it goes there. Let's see. Deliver 10 milliliters. Uh, it says five times. Oh, two milliliters of solution five times to get my 10 milliliters. Ooh, I should read my own materials. All right, so now uh, I'll show that table in a minute. We are now going to get rid of my solution from before in the 50 milliliter beaker into the waste. Doesn't matter if it's clean or dry because whatever water is in there still is just going to add to my milliliters. That's why you don't have to condition this, right? Whenever you're just measuring mass, you don't have to condition. Whenever you're measuring molarity or keeping the molarity constant, that's when you have to measure. So let's do the first part. Oh. Yeah, I'll just weigh it. Wait for my zeros. There it is. Weigh it. 6.10 grams. Pipe it in exactly 10 milliliters. Hit that line. Two. Sorry, number one, because that's two milliliters. Number two. And density of the solution is going to be very close to one, so make sure you hit that line exactly. Third one, get all of it out every single time. Touch the inside. That's three. Four. Just below. Five. Get the inside, get that last drop. Switch over to my scale. 6.10 before. It 
16.49. And you can see that uh, whereas these went up by just about 11, these are going up by closer to 10 and a half. That's a good indication that everything's going okay. You're going to keep going until you have added two, 10 milliliters two more times. And then, oop, get this out of there. As far as data collection, you basically do the entire same thing again, except starting with approximately 3.5 grams. That will give you one, two, three, four sets of data that will end up being four points for your graphs later as you continue this lab. We'll have another one on the calculations coming up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish the data collection by myself. You should finish the data collection by yourself, and then we'll compare data in the next video.